Well, tubers, tubettes, and of course, crazy people, I am over at a beautiful apartment owned, or rented rather, by my friend Ali. And Ali called me up about a week ago, and he said, hey Paul, I've got something that I feel really compelled that I want to share with your subscribers and viewers on your channel. And so finally we were able to get our schedules together, and I am now at his new apartment. And I have absolutely, positively, no idea what it is Ali wants to talk about. But I do know that he took the time to write it down. So why don't you join me, sit down, relax, and we'll see just what it is Ali feels so compelled to share with you. Good morning, my name is Ali. I've been friends with Paul for almost three years. I've been living in the Philippines for almost two years and a few months and I just want to share a story with you guys because I felt this is good information for everyone and here we go. I want to title this that I'm reliving my 20s in my 60s in Philippines and what do I mean by that? In the last 25 years I had two divorces plus five heart attacks in California lost over half a million dollars between real estate, 401k, because of two divorces. My second divorce took over 11 years. Between age of 50 to 60, I became invisible, depressed, suicidal, thinking I have zero value. Feminism has changed America completely in the last 30 years. Family values have gone down drastically. But about three years ago, at age of 60, my life started to change completely. Philippines, yes, Philippines changed my life. And I'm gonna tell you why. Western way of thinking is completely different than Eastern way of thinking. After two divorces, and having three grown-up children, I was 100% sure that I will never ever get married again. But I was wrong. I found a loving, caring, understanding, kind, beautiful Filipina who changed my life completely. After knowing her for over a year and a half and living with her for more than a year, we got married 14 months ago. She's almost 40 years younger than me. I am 63, she is 23 years old. Four years ago, I would have never thought that would be possible because I was living in California and I had a Western way of thinking about life. But Eastern way of thinking in Philippines is completely different. In the West, women are after three main things in a man. Number one, his looks, body shape, having an awesome body, being in perfect shape and health. Number two, social status, his job, his education. Number three, money and wealth. In Philippines, the three most important things the woman wants from a man is totally different. In here in Philippines, these are three things that women are looking in the man. The most important thing that they care about is number one, having a good heart, being a kind and nice man, being caring and loving. Number two, being a family man, loving family, caring about family values and loving children. The third, being loyal, mature, and honest. So as you see, Western women think totally different than Eastern women. It is true in Philippines, age doesn't matter. Love does not discriminate. Looks doesn't matter. Beauty is from within, not from the outside. Loving, caring, family, honesty, kindness, children are the most important thing in a relationship. 
In Philippines, women love being women. Feminine, kind, caring, sweet, loving, family-oriented, having a lot of respect for their husband, parents, and family members. No one in Philippines is alone. Loneliness does not exist here. Everyone is part of the family. Families don't leave anybody behind. I love my wife. I respect my wife. I care about my wife. I respect and care about her parents. I respect and care about her brother, her sister, and her family members. I participate in all family gatherings and fiestas. I spend time with her family. I treat her family like my own family. I am retired after working hard for 45 years in California. So I do have a decent income. I am not rich, but I have enough money and income to provide a decent life for my wife. In the past two and a half years being in Philippines with my wife, we have bought a motorbike, a brand new car, cooking ware, house appliances, furniture, and recently we purchased a land to build our house together. My wife loves me, cares for me, respects me. On WhatsApp, she talks to my parents, to my brother, to my sister, all the time. She's part of my family in California, and I'm part of her family in Philippines. This is the meaning of happiness in life, having a great partner, great family, great friends. Philippine is not perfect. It's not complete paradise. It has a lot of flaws, but it also has a lot of pros. And the most important value in Philippine is their people. Yes, there are bad people here too. There are scammers here, but it is our duty to be careful and don't get fooled. But majority of people here are good and decent people. In Western society, money, wealth, jewelry, car, homes, furniture, clothing, shoes are the most important things in life. In Philippines, family, kindness, children, caring, loving, being together, taking care of each other are the most important thing in life. So if you're the Western man, thinking Western and loving Western values is completely okay. It is your life, your choice. But if you're like me and enjoy Eastern way of life and thinking, then you would love Philippines. Yes, I am living my 20s in my 60s again. That's it? Yes. That was very poignant. That was very, very heartfelt. That was very, very touching. What compelled you to write that? What compelled you to share that with my audience? Uh, it's hard not to get emotional. Up. But I almost died a few times. I did not see the light, but I felt something. And my last heart episode, it really changed my life and changed my mind that there has to be more out there. This cannot be it. I should not die at age of 60. I, have, I should have at least another decade left in my life. So it was a rough time, you know, it was, I had a hard 20 years, extremely difficult 20 years. From way up here, I came all the way down here. Then I went up here, I was coming down again. I had to pull a plug. My cardiologist is a good friend of mine. He told me three years ago, Ali, if you want to live, leave America. It's a rat race. I was a car salesman, selling 20 cars every month, just like you. You know how tough that business is. It's brutal business. Selling that many cars, working 12 hour days, six days a week. They belittle you. I mean, they make you feel so low. In America, it's like 
If you don't work 60 hours, they call you lazy. If you don't make six figure, they call you poor. I just got tired of that mentality, that lifestyle of the rat chase that you always had to chase something and you never knew what you were chasing. I mean, I had almost a 5,000 square feet house. I had two SUV, two Mercedes, but I wasn't happy. You know, it's like you come here and you see people that barely have anything, but they're so happy. It's like, how come they can be happy, but we cannot be happy with all that wealth? So it's not the money. It's not the money. It's not the money. And what is it? Is it the, is it the connections that people make here? Is it, the, is it the friendships that you have? Like you and I have been friends now for going on three years. Do we see each other every day? No. no. But do you know for a fact that you could call me if you had a problem? Yes. And that would be there for you? Yes. I know the same about you. I can't say that about very many people in America. In fact, that'd be a hard stretch to find one. That's true. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Um, what about your wife? I mean, how did you meet her? Uh, about three years ago, I met her on Facebook. Okay. And I went through, I'm going to be honest, I went through like 25 different girls online. Okay. You, know, you go mm -hmm. on those channels, you know, you start meeting all these girls, you get all this attention. Sure. You think you're Brad Pitt, but you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you're Ali Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I got really into it. I would work for 12 hours, come home, sit on my computer, and I start chatting. But as the time went on, I got scammed, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, education is not free. Mm -hmm. You have to pay for it. <laughs> you know, no I one, like that. No that one gets, be the entire no one video. gets free education. <laughs> Until it actually happens to you, you will not believe it. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure when I start watching you, when I start watching other bloggers about three and a half years ago, you guys all said the same thing. Boots on the ground, do not send money. Boots on the ground, do not send money. Did I listen? No. I fell for it. It was my fault. But I learned from it. Sure. It got to a point that after getting scammed a few times, I told my brother, I'm done with Philippines. They're all scammers. They're all bad people. But after living here for a few years, I'm finding out these are companies. These are companies that are getting caught left and right, that they have employees. You know, it was funny because four of the girls that I was chatting with, they knew each other. And I thought, okay, because they live in Dumaguete, they know each other. But later on, I found out they all work for this Chinese company for like 10, 12 hours. It's called like a call center that they do that fishing. They mm -hmm. start getting Westerns, especially Americans. Their English is perfect mm -hmm. because that's what they do for a living. Mm -hmm. So they're still all sweet talking to you. And the first week, they're all nice and everything. Second week, you call them, they call you, they start coughing. What's wrong, honey? I don't know. I have this sore throat, but I have no money to go mm -hmm. see a doctor. Well, how much is a doctor? It's $10. $10? Are you kidding me? Here, I want to send you $20 Western Union. Thank you, honey. I love you. Okay, I love you too. Next week, my dad is sick. <laughs> the yeah. third week, my dog is sick. So it was kind of like becoming a pattern. So little by little, I go, wow. Looks like everybody in Philippines gets sick, and then their family gets sick, their uncle dies. Right. So finally i go okay i got my education i'm gonna pull the plug and i did so i told my brother i'm done i'm not gonna go to philippines the old scammers not knowing it was my fault through this website that one of my buddy here put me through mm -hmm. it was this company that the, all these girls work for the same company mm -hmm. and i was naive i didn't uh -huh. know even selling cars for 25 years when it came to that i was naive sure and I didn't even know till like six months ago, after living here for two years, I realized there are companies here that they do that. And you're thinking you're talking to a regular girl? Sometimes you're not. Sometimes. Yeah, Let's sometimes you're not. Sometimes. Yeah. Not all the time. But so finally, I was almost giving up. But all of a sudden, my current wife sends me a text that I became friend of your friend. And I like your profile. And this is while you were in America? Yeah. Okay. This was three years ago. Okay. So I'm like, I saw your profile and I like you. 
you know, and I want to get to know you. My goal was if someday I was going to come to Philippines, I didn't want any girl to be hooked up with if they had children. Mm -hmm. You know, I was talking about thinking, Western thinking. Three years ago in U.S., I had no idea how life is in here. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking in Western way of thinking. I thought that, okay, I've been divorced twice. I have three children. I should look for someone that's been divorced here at least once or twice and I have at least two or three children. We'd be a good match. We can understand each other because we have the same past. By little by little, I realized that, no, that's not the case because that would be a mistake to find someone exactly with the same drama I have. Right. I'm trying to get rid of my drama. I'm trying to have an easier life. So if I'm going to have someone that has two or three children, two or three different husband or boyfriend, what am I going to get myself into? Right. Well, they're going to become, they're going to inject into your world. Exactly. They're going to become a part of your circle of influence, whether you want it or not, yep. whether she wants it or not. Exactly. They are always going to be there. So when you met your wife, she was childless. Yes. And do you guys plan on keeping it that way? Do you plan on having a baby? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not saying yes. I'm not saying no. Okay. You know, and I really believe that you have to be together at least three years before you have those kind of planning. Okay. You know, I'm sure in 99% of the things right now. But to get back to the story, the reason I chose my wife, I had no choice to bring down the age gap. Because any woman over 30, all of them had at least one child. Okay. 90% of girls over 25 had at least one child. So finally, I brought it down. I go, okay, I'm going to go down to 20. I'm not going to go below 20. At that time, she just had turned 21. So she comes on, she's 21, I'm almost 61. So I'm like, okay, you know, she's really young, but let's give it a shot. Okay. So we start chatting and things went on. But for, she didn't scam you. No, she never asked for money. That's what I want to bring you know, up because yeah. we get a lot of the scam stuff. And I want to acknowledge that, yes, it happens. But I also want to acknowledge that not everybody Correct. is in that realm. You're living Correct. proof of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think also just, um, I didn't know we were going to go in this direction, but I want to throw in my two cents on the scam. I think that, granted, if there's a company like you're talking about, yeah, there's pros out there that are going to play the long game. They're going to exploit your vulnerability, your loneliness. They're going to qualify you and they're going to clean you out because they're good at it. However, I think that there's many cases where the man is at fault because the woman never ever once will ask for money if you get a nice lady like your wife. But then the man thinks that he's, because he's so conditioned by the American way of thinking, I have to impress her with my wallet. I call it leading with your wallet. Correct. That you got to throw gifts and show them that you're rich, not rich, but you know, that you're well off or that you're generous or you're a nice guy. And that, that stems, I think, from insecurity. Your personality, your charm, yep. and your lack of looks or having good looks, either way, should be enough. Just you being you should yep. be enough and have her endeared to your heart and your soul, and that's plenty. We as men, I'm going to say, make a, we, we create our own scams. <laughs> you know? I totally you agree. Take, you yes. take, you, there's a nice lady talking to yeah. you, and then, you know what? The next thing you know, you're sending her 20 bucks, 30 bucks, because you're trying to be a nice guy, and you think that's the way that you're supposed to do it, and then it kind of ruins her. It takes this woman that had no intention of uh, anything other than meeting a nice guy, someone who's hygienically uh, clean, someone that is kind and is a mellow soul and not abusive and is looking for true love and loves family, and then we go ahead and ruin it. Would you agree? <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. That's true. So That's I won't true. harp on that very yeah. long, but I see it over and over and over again. I think all guys tend to lead with their wallet. It just comes natural. And it's a hard habit to break. I feel like that that's, goes back again to the Western way yes. of thinking. Because yeah. as long as we live in a Western societies, yeah. 
99% of women that they get attracted to us yeah. is not because of our kindness and a good heart. Yeah, yeah. It's how much money we have, right. what kind of car we drive, what kind of right. job we have, and how good we look. Right. Because, you know, I'm not putting down feminism, you know, but like I said before, women here are feminine and they like being feminine. Correct. You know, I mean, my wife loves to clean the house, loves to do dishes. Sometimes I do dishes, she gets mad at me. I go, why are you getting mad? She goes, you don't think I can do a good job? Why are you washing dishes? Right. That's my job. I go, all my life I wash dishes. I enjoy washing dishes. She goes, okay, as long as you enjoy washing dishes. So, but in America, it's like, women wanted to become men and women. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of like they want both. You know, like my ex was making more money than I made. So it was very hard for her after our divorce, I got a few years of alimony. And she was saying, what kind of man are you that you're getting alimony from me? I go, if it was the other way around, you wouldn't want the money? She goes, of course I do. <laughs> I go, you make three times money I make. So now that we split, your lifestyle is still same. Mine has dropped. Right. I need help. Let me ask you this question. This is going to be the one the, the, not the elephant in the room, but this is the one that's probably going to receive the most comments. The 40-year age gap. Let's review that for a second. Where do, where do you stand on that? Uh, you know what? Four years ago, if you ask me this question, I would say it's crazy. I would say, first of all, it's not right. It's not going to happen. It's unnatural. It's unnatural. You have nothing in common. And again, that's Western way of thinking. Unless you come here, mm -hmm. live here. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about two weeks vacation, three weeks right. vacation. I'm talking at least a year. Mm -hmm. Then little by little, you're going to see the difference between the way people think here and the way people think in the West. Mm -hmm. I know we're going to get a lot of comments in this because they're going to say, okay, so when you were 50, she was 10 years old. You're a pervert. You're this, you're that. That's the Western way of thinking. I didn't meet her when she was 10. I met her when she was 21. Mm -hmm. So a 21 year old is mature enough to make her own decisions. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like I was taking advantage of her. You were and not. I don't think she was taking advantage of me. And I didn't believe in the beginning that they kept saying age doesn't matter. I always say it's BS. They're just saying that. But later on, I was walking down the boulevard and I see all these Older men with younger women, hugging, kissing, loving, being together, all happy. It's a normal thing in here. Well, I see it not only on the boulevard, but I see it over a number of years. I've seen couples that have been together with 20, 30, 40 year age gaps, and they're just as happy as clams. Well, I'm an example of that. Yeah. I've been with my wife. We have a 30 year age gap. We're just have you seen us ever explode or her no. exploit me or me exploit her or See, nothing? That's, that's another happen. thing. In here, women, when I say women are women, what do I mean by that? There are a few things. I want to focus on a couple of them. I've never seen a woman here yelling and screaming at their man in public. Ever. Ever. I don't know if they do it at home. She never done it with me. Even right. if you had an argument or a small fight. She never raised her voice at me. She never throw things at me. Nope. She never says, get the F out of here or go F yourself. They never talk like that. They act like a lady. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't want to put Western women down, but some of them, their foul mouth, foul behavior, foul behavior and they get it. It's like once they become angry, they forget who they are. Right. And they just do crazy things. Right. Another thing, I think women here, they get a lot more mature faster. Because a lot, and people say, well, what do you mean by that? You know what I mean? Is she a college degree? Does she have a master's degree? It has nothing to do with school. There is an intelligency and there is a public intelligency. There is a street smart and school smart. They're very good in uh, street smarts. What do I mean by that? From five year old, they start sweeping the floors, they start mopping the floor, they start cooking, they start cleaning. Is that a bad thing? No. Everyone should learn how to cook. Everyone is a survivor. 
You need to learn those basic things in life to be able to survive. God forbid, earthquake happens. Both of your mom and dad die. And you have to stand on your own feet and you're seven years old. Right. And you have no clue. Not, you don't even know how to put your clothes on. Is that good? Right. No. So when I met my wife at age of 21, her brain was like a 31, 40-year-old person. You know what? You hit it on the head. And I agree with that 1,000% is the much, much more mature they are at the age of 20 than many Western women are at the age of 30. A woman here, if she's grown up, most likely she's had uh, a less than adequate income, not necessarily poverty, but they're just kind of getting by. Everybody learns to pull together. Everybody tries to share, chip in, and they're not spoiled by any sense of the imagination. They don't even have Santa Claus out here. Santa Claus, because you can't take your kid to Santa Claus yeah. because you can't fulfill the wish. That's so, true. <laughs> right? But compare your wife at the age of 21 to, again, I'm not bashing America, but an American woman who on her 18th birthday was given a brand new car. Yep. What appreciation does she have for that car? Yep. Compare that to your wife who has appreciations for a simple meal yes. that's hot, yes. that's prepared, for a simple apartment or house that's clean, that's livable, for a man that is loyal, generous with his with his feelings, with his time, with his energy. I recently met a 35-year-old woman who's a widow from an American guy. She has gone through a year now of grieving his loss and has decided to get back in the proverbial market. And she's in a quandary. She says, you know, I've been dating guys my age. She's 35. She said, I've been dating these guys that are 35, 40. And she says, but we're not connecting. Because she was married to a guy that was 65 plus. And she said, yeah, they have the body. Yeah, they're, they're, they have the looks. But they don't have the wisdom. And they don't have the peace. And they don't have the knowledge. And they don't have that gentle spirit of an older man. She said, they're all nice guys. Nobody beat me. Nobody did anything wrong. Nobody did any advances. But she said, I had a tough time connecting with them just because of their age. So I think that might put a little cherry yes. on, the, on the point. In the know? beginning, I was kind of worried that uh, because, again, Western way of thinking that because of the almost 40 years age gap, we have no connection, nothing in common. But that is not true. That is not true. We, I think we have more things in common than my previous two exes combined. Sure. Because you, you know, know what? You're simple. And all humans, I think, are, are simple. I think that what, we, what do we really want? We want to know that we have trust. We want to know that we have affection. We want to know that we have mutual respect. And we want to know that we can count on one another through thick and through thin. Good times, bad times. You know, I want to mention one thing that is, again, I don't want to put down America, but uh, since I've been here, I've gone back three times. I go back every nine months to visit my family. My dad is 94, my mom is 84, and I have three children. So every time I want to go back, I have to worry about who's going to pick me up from San Francisco airport. <laughs> it's like, you feel like, okay, you guys haven't seen me for a year and most of my relatives are retired. Dude, get an Uber, get an Uber. <laughs> but I get to San Francisco at midnight, so what? Uber works at midnight. In here, the first time I went to America, I didn't have a car. Four of my friends that had cars, they called me, hey, do you wanna ride in the airport? No, it's okay, are you sure? Okay. It's totally different. In here, it's like, when you need something, there are more people are willing to help you. Absolutely. In America, when you need something, it's like nobody knows you. Everybody's individual. Yep. And I think it's the way the life is, and they advertise that. We are raised in America to be self-sufficient. Yes. Men and women. 
And so it's kind of hard to bash the women in a way because that's what they've been programmed to think. And that Uber statement really sums it up. Ali, you're independent. You're a big boy. Get an Uber and come on down and see us. Yeah. Where here, it's, hey, do you need a lift? Do and, you need a ride? And that because is we like, know to help one yeah, another out here. Now that I've been living here for three years, if I was the other way around, if I was in U.S. and let's say my brother was coming back and I hadn't seen him for a year, I would be dying to see him. Dude, I'm going to come pick you up because that two hours ride from San Francisco to Sacramento, yeah. we can talk. Yeah. We're not around our wives. We're not around our family. Right. Man to man, we can talk. I'm like, where did that go? Right. Where did that urgency of like, right. I haven't seen you for a year. I'm dying to see you. And then uh, <laughs> another funny thing happened. Uh, I know my brothers might not like this. But <laughs> last time I went back there, his wife wouldn't let me see me for two days to make sure I don't have COVID. No kidding. I'm not kidding. Wow. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. He calls me and goes, dude, I cannot see you for two days. Why? Because my wife thinks you might have a COVID. I'm like, I'm over mom and dad. I'm over my sisters. And you the only one worried? Yeah. Hmm. I said, okay. It's her right. Yeah. So two days goes by. Then he comes to seize me. So why? Because I'm coming from Philippines. I have COVID. 10,000 people died in Philippines from COVID. Over a million people died in America. And they worried about me bringing COVID. I mean, I don't want to go there, but I'm just saying it shows how much West is different than the East. Until you actually pack your stuff, come here, live here, you're not going to realize that. Let me ask you this question, because it's kind of what we started with, and kind of your title for the video that you wanted me to use. If you'd stayed in America, if you'd never made this trip, and I'm just, I don't want to be dramatic here, but what are the odds that you'd be alive? 10%. Really? Yes. You give yourself a, a, a chance, a 10% chance Living. that you yes. would still be alive, talking yes. and walking and chewing yes. gum right yeah. now. Yes. So do you feel yes. that three years ago by making the trip over here, not only did it brighten your mood, it uh, eliminated your depression, you were able to fulfill many dreams that you were chasing in America and could never find, but you also feel it extended your life? Yes. Not only the stress, the way of life. I had five heart attacks. I had an open heart surgery and three times I had to put different stents. Genetically, I'm screwed. <laughs> Both of my grandparents died of heart disease. My grandmother 57, my grandfather 58. So I'm genetically have heart disease in my genes. What adds to it? Stress, food. In America, everything's processed. Everything has gluten. Everything has preservatives. It's very hard to eat healthy in America. Why? When a chicken is growing up, they inject the chicken. The cow is growing up, they inject the cow. They want to make everything fluffier, bigger, so they can make more money. When I came here, we went to a restaurant and it says whole chicken for like five bucks. I go, wow. So I'm thinking, whole chicken. And they said it's called native chicken. It comes and it's like this big. I'm like, is this a chicken? Yeah. Why? Because they're so small. Well, this is how chicken is here. Because I'm used to in America that only a leg of chicken is this big. Because they put all that stuff in the animal. They inject our animals. They inject our food. They put pesticides in our fruits and vegetables. I don't want to go beyond that, but I feel it's all about corporations making money off you. They make you sick. Right now I'm on nine medication. They make you sick so you can get sick. Then they sell you pills. So it's kind of like a, what we used to say in car business, they put you together. Yeah. It's yeah. like they feed you junk so you can get the illness. Then you have to go to the doctor. You have to pay all those high cost of medical expenses. Then you have to stay in all these medication. 
interesting things. I'm type 2 diabetic. For 10 years I was diabetic before I came to here, so I was always taking metformin. So when I come here, I get a new doctor. First thing he told me, he said, I'm going to get you off metformin, I'm going to put you on this other medication, which is kind of expensive. It's like 80 peso each pill, which is like $1.20. Metformin is 10 peso or 20 peso. So I go, but I've been on metformin for 10 years. Why? He goes, metformin pays the highest percentage to the doctors that prescribes you. Like in California, there's Kaiser's, there is Sutter's. I have two doctors in my family. One, for, one for, works for Kaiser, one works for Sutter. Everyone in, all the doctors in Kaiser's, when you have diabetic, they have to prescribe you metformin. They cannot prescribe you any other one because Kaiser has made a deal with metformin that my company only gives this kind of pill even if there are other pills that are better for you. When I find that out, my head blew up. That's why I'm saying if I would have stayed in the U.S., I would have been dead. But they were giving me junk, not only junk food, junk medication. Half of the medication I was taking there, I'm taking different brands. And the reason is all because of money. It's, it's kind of scary. Mm -hmm. It's really scary. I mean, I love America. I think it's the greatest country on the planet. But enough is enough. Yeah. I mean, we're all guinea pigs. They're just trying to make money out of us. Yeah. Work, 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 and work. it's never a cure. It's always something to help you deal with it. Yeah. Don't so retire at 62. Don't retire at 67. Work till 70. How many percent of people live up to 70? Right. I had a lot of friends. They were going to get their first Social Security check. They had a heart attack. They died. Right. You know, if you're a median income person, by the time you're 67, you have $300,000 in your Social Security account and $120,000 in your Medicare account. When I retired at the age of 62, I had $260,000 in my Social Security that I had paid and $110,000 Medicare. So almost $400,000 combined. If I would have stayed and died, $400,000 was gone. So I'm withdrawing Social Security is my money. Right. It's not welfare. Right. Because last time we had a meeting about Social Security, a lot of people said, oh, you guys are cheap because you depend on Social Security. It's my money. That's right. I've told everyone retired you know, at 62. And it's I've crazy. made two videos about yeah, it. And everybody says, oh, if I work a few, few years more, I'm going to get a little bit more. Yeah, but are you going to live that long? <laughs> exactly. You know, point. I did the math. If you retire 62 versus 70, you have to live all the way up to 87 to make it even. Right. So if you live above 87, it's good to collect at 70. But if you're going to die before 87, it's good to start 62. And not to mention that at 62, you start living this life as opposed to living that life at 67. Five more years of abuse. <laughs> you know, that's the other thing I was going to say. For all the guys out there, I'm 63, and I have a 23-year-old wife, so I, 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 you know where I'm going there. There is certain time limit. I'm telling you guys, you're not Brad Pitt at age of 70 or 65 or 67. Your testosterone drops. Yeah. So a lot of people that say, oh my God, I'm going to wait till like 70, then I'm going to travel, then I'm going to get beautiful wives. What are you going to do with them right. at age of 70? You're going to have a back problem, you're going to have a leg problem. You cannot go see a waterfall because you cannot no. climb down, climb up. That's right. You know, your buddies go swimming, go to the ocean. You, you do two laps, you start coughing and you start, your heartbeat goes up. Enjoy your life while you can. Say that one more time, because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end the video on those words. Enjoy your life while you're able to enjoy it. Thank you for coming on the channel, Ali. Thank you. Thank you.